Did you know that most private and hard money lending companies offer an opportunity to invest in the loans that they originate? In this video, I'm going to explain five different ways to invest in private mortgage loans, the minimum investment amount required, and how to find private lending firms that are currently offering mortgage investment opportunities. I'm Rocky Batani, CEO of PrivateLenderLink.com, where investors and brokers find direct private hard money lending companies throughout the United States. If you're in the investment real estate business and want to gain insights into private mortgage lending, subscribe to our channel and get notified every time we release a new video. Also known as private money loans, hard money loans, or bridge loans, private mortgages are secured by investment real estate and offer the potential to earn between 6% and 12% annually. I'll make separate videos to cover the risk profile and the typical returns in detail. For this video, I want to focus on the few ways to invest in private mortgage loans. Now, before we get started, I want to quickly clarify the terminology for the three main parties involved. When I say investor, I'm referring to the mortgage investor or capital provider, not the real estate investor. The real estate investor in private mortgage transactions is the borrower. And finally, when I say lender, I'm referring to the loan originator, not the capital provider. An originator is the private lending company or mortgage broker that underwrites and processes the loan, and it's the party that's offering the opportunity to invest in the loan. Now, let's get into the five ways to invest in private mortgages. Number one, whole loan at closing. With this first method, the loan originator underwrites the loan request and pitches it to mortgage investors that may want to fund it. If you make a commitment to invest, you would wire the funds for the entire loan amount when the loan is ready to close. In exchange, you'll receive a mortgage note confirming the subject property is collateral for the loan and you'll collect interest payments during the loan term. You may hear this referred to as table funding. This method of investing provides mortgage investors with more control without having to deal with the borrower directly. If there is a default which leads to foreclosure, you could end up owning the property. Regardless of the outcome, you get to make all the decisions. You can decide when to foreclose and what to do with the property after. With this method, one potential challenge for both the investor and the lender is timing. Most private and hard money loans are time sensitive and you just have to be ready to act quickly. When a loan originator is seeking capital for a particular loan, they're likely pitching it to multiple investors simultaneously. So there's a bit of pressure to make a quick decision and follow through with funding on schedule. Number two, fractional loan at closing. Similar to the previous method, the mortgage investor wires the funds when the loan's ready to close, but some lenders will offer a fractional investment in a loan so that multiple investors have an interest in the same loan. You may hear this referred to as a syndication. It's a neat structure that enables investors to allocate a smaller amount for each investment and it prevents having all eggs in one basket. So the idea is if you have a bunch of fractional loan investments and one borrower defaults, the other loans may continue to make payments. Now, fractional investments are not offered in all states. When you pool funds from multiple investors, it's a securities, and only certain states allow it, each with different rules. For example, in California, a private mortgage loan can have up to 10 individual investors, but all of them must reside in California. Many lenders avoid fractional investments due to the additional compliance, and it's also a lot of work to manage multiple investors. One potential challenge with this method of investing is if there is a foreclosure and the property ownership is relinquished, you may have to work with other fractional note holders to decide what to do with the property. Whereas with the first method of investing in the whole loan, you as a sole investor can make all the decisions. Number three, purchase the loan after closing. Some lenders use their own money or a bank credit line to fund loans and then sell the notes to mortgage investors shortly after closing. So why would a lender do this if they can use other people's money? It's all about timing and control. The process of pitching a loan request to multiple investors could take a few days and lenders don't want to risk losing deals to competitors that may be able to close faster. Because like I said earlier, most private and hard money loans are time sensitive and every single day counts. One advantage to this method is there's less pressure to make a quick decision on whether you want to invest in the loan. The lender probably won't mind if it takes two, three, or four weeks to sell the loan. Number four, lend direct to borrower. This is similar to method number one, funding the whole loan at closing, but without a loan originator. In the previous three methods of investing, the lender has a relationship with the borrower and the mortgage investor likely never has any contact with a borrower. However, I've met a number of mortgage investors who lend directly to property investors and don't have a loan originator involved. 
Now, there's a lot of risk with this method of investing if you don't have experience with private mortgages. It may be safer to have a professional loan originator underwrite the loan before you evaluate it. Now, on the other hand, I've known some loan originators who originate very bad risky loans and leave it up to the investor to decide if it's a good investment. In some states, it's not legal for investors to originate their own loans without a license. Or you may be able to fund a small number of loans annually without a license, but once you exceed that number, the state regulators consider you to operate a lending business, which requires oversight. Number five, mortgage funds. A mortgage fund is a pool of investors that have a partial ownership of the lending entity. This is a very passive form of investing because the fund manager makes all the decisions on which loans to fund. In the previous four methods of investing that I mentioned, the investor gets to choose which loans to invest in after evaluating things like the subject property, the borrower, and other details. And the fund manager can't just lend on any type of deal. When the fund is initially formed, they have to create a document which spells out the general investment guidelines, such as the property locations, the loan amounts, the loan to value, property types, loan types, etc. It's sort of a business plan, but it's called a private placement memorandum and has to be filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission before the fund can start operating. Since a mortgage fund is a securities, they are regulated by the SEC and it's only available to accredited investors, which means you need to qualify with a certain amount of income or net worth. Some mortgage funds are structured as a REIT or real estate investment trust, which offers some tax benefits that you don't get from other methods of mortgage investing. Minimum investment amounts. Now that we've covered the five ways to invest in private mortgages, you may be wondering how much money is required to invest. For a whole loan investment, the minimum amount is typically $50,000. I don't see many lenders originating loan amounts under $100,000 because it may not be worth their time, but some will go down to $50,000 and a very small number of lenders will go down to $25,000. For a fractional investment, the minimum investment amount could be as low as $10,000. If a lender originates a loan amount of $100,000, they may get 10 investors to each pledge 10% instead of finding one investor to take down the entire loan. For a mortgage fund, the minimum investment amount is typically $50,000. However, I've seen some fund managers go down to $5,000 with a strategy to take on a large number of investors. And then there's some funds that set a minimum of $250,000 or more if their fund is already well established with a lot of investors. Some fund managers will accept a lower amount than their stated minimum just so they can get the investor in the door with the hope that additional money will be invested in the near future. If you're looking to invest in private mortgages, our website privatelenderlink.com could be a great resource for you. We have an investments directory which lists companies that offer private mortgage investment opportunities and there's no fee to search and there's no registration required. When you get to the homepage of privatelenderlink.com, click investments in the main menu. Then select one of the two investment types, mortgage trustees or mortgage funds. Out of the five methods of mortgage investing I covered earlier, the first four fall in the mortgage trustee category. Our website has the ability to filter by property region, target annual return, minimum investment amount, property type, loan type, and much more. Click on each company's profile to learn about their investment offering and scroll to the bottom of the page to find their phone number and a short form to send them an email inquiry. Now just to clarify, I'm not an investment advisor and I do not endorse any of the investments listed on our website. Each investor must conduct their own due diligence and evaluate the offering prior to investing. The companies listed pay a monthly or annual advertising fee to us, not a commission. Also, there's no set placement for the investment section of our website. The investment search results are randomized and should change when you select a filter or reload your browser. We do offer top placement opportunities in the lender searches of our site, but that's for loan origination targeting borrowers and brokers, not mortgage investors. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like button and check out our other videos about private and hard money lending. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.